Okay, welcome to the Small Ball Podcast. Um, my name is Bill Littler. Um, we're on Beaver County Softball Network. Uh, today's episode is going to be about understanding bats. So it's going to be a kind of a high-level um, overview of, of bats, the different types of materials, different things. Uh, it's geared towards the new parents uh, in the area, or anywhere actually, um, and just to help them understand um, you know, what bat technologies are out there. Um, now, this is our first podcast that has a sponsor, and I'd like to announce that sponsor before we get started. Um, his name is Jeff Plumer. Uh, he graciously donated $400 uh, as, as a gift voucher through one of his companies that he's a, a, a bat rep for. So he uh, is a rep for Headbanger Sports, also Richie Bats, and Burley Gloves. Um, so if you do win this uh, gift voucher, you'll be able to reach out to him and use a $400 credit in either one of those stores. Uh, <clears throat> so what we're going to do with this is um, we're going to sell 20 chances to win, um, and each entry is going to cost $20. Um, so you're going to have 1 in 20 chances to win this bat raffle. Um, how we're going to draw the name is, or draw the winner is we're going to have like a live reverse um, auction or live reverse drawing. And what we're going to do is draw names. And as we draw your name, that means you're eliminated from the, from the, uh, the raffle. Um, how we're going to do this is I'm going to have two Beaver County softball players join me. Um, her, uh, their names are Sam Rosenberger from Riverside and Macy Littler from Central Valley. They're both seniors. Um, I had the pleasure of coaching them uh, with Valley Rage 05 uh, as well. They're teammates too with Team Pennsylvania. So um, I know these girls well and, and we have a lot of fun together. So it should be entertaining. Uh, what we're going to do is sit uh, and watch a college softball game live um, and we'll tell you guys what uh, game we're watching and we're going to try to commentate over top of it so um, it'll be entertaining uh, I'll ask the girls questions uh, you know we'll we'll talk about the game and what's happening um, you know in in, uh, in between innings we'll draw names and eliminate uh, uh, entries from the raffle and the last name that we don't draw will be the winner um, so and when we'll do that in a later date um, we'll figure out what game and what day it is and we'll announce it um, but right now we have to sell these entries. Um, I announced this raffle um, earlier for the Beaver County folks. Uh, so by the time that this is um, published and, you know, people from outside our area sees it, uh, if there's entries left, you're more than welcome to um, purchase one if you would like to. So um, just get on our uh, Facebook page um, the, at BC Softball Network, uh, and you'll see an update of where we're at as far as uh, entries go. So having said that, um, our sponsor again today uh, with uh, episode three, Understanding Bats, is Jeff Plumer, and uh, let's get started. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the Small Ball Podcast. Uh, my name is Bill Littler. Uh, this is episode three, Understanding Bats. Uh, and it's geared towards the younger parents who are just getting into the game of fast pitch. Um, I know with my involvement in fast pitch as, as a coach and commissioner of the Beaver County Fast Pitch League, um, former commissioner, I guess, um, <clears throat> uh, we get a lot of questions about, you know, what kind of bat should I get my kid? What what size should I get? Do I need to spend this much money? Um, you know, can I just buy a bat from Walmart? Um, so we get a lot of those questions, uh, anyone who's involved as far as coaching goes. So um, there's a lot of parents out there that real that aren't real sure about bats and what to do and what to get. And there's so many different options out there and the prices are crazy. So um, this, this episode is kind of designed to help those parents along and give them some education on the bat technologies uh, and maybe help them, uh, you know, make a better decision on what bats to get for their kids. Uh, so let's get started here. So the first thing that we'll talk about is the design of the bats. Um, there's uh, several different designs, but the first one we'll talk about is the one-piece bats. 
Um, these are the old school type bats uh, that we that we're used to, or that we grew up swinging. The uh, the alloy type bats, the metal. Uh, they're just made with one material. There's no other um, pieces on the bat. It's just one solid piece all the way through the bat. Um, these bats can be very stiff and unforgiving. Um, so you'll have a lot of complaints with the girls that their hands were stinging or what have you. Um, but they're very stiff um, bats when you when you swing with them. Um, but because of that rigidness or that uh, you know that that stiffness that makes them more durable, right? So um, you know they they may not break because there's not as many moving parts on it. Uh, it's just one piece uh, a bat and and it it, it becomes a, a, a more durable bat and especially in colder weather. Um, now these bats also tend to be less expensive. Um, there are exceptions to this. Uh, you know, Rocket Tech, Tech makes one one piece uh, composite bats that are that are in a you know three hundred dollar range. So there are exceptions to this, but for the most part, you know, these one piece bats are typically your your less expensive bats. Um, now talking about the two piece bats, um, these bats are more common bats. Uh, they have the the one the handle is one piece and the barrel is one piece, and it's connected connected in the middle. Um, and uh, you know that makes the bats more flexible. So with the bat being more flexible, it creates more of a trampoline effect when you're making contact with these bats. Um, now, because of that uh, moving parts and that separation between the two pieces, um, they do become less durable. Uh, you know that flexibility that you want to help with the the trampoline effect also is a weak spot in the bat. So you do have some durability issues. Um, and of course, this technology um, is more expensive, this bat technology, and it could be, you know, because of the design, it's a little, a little bit more complicated. The, pro the products used to make them um, cost a little bit more, or maybe just the demand for it is higher, um, but they, they do tend to be more expensive. Um, now, the, the three-piece bats, uh, these aren't as common. Um, I know that there's, they're, they're probably more common in the slow pitch area, but fast pitch I only know of one design right now um, that is uh, taking advantage of this three-piece um, design um, it's a newer technology so I'm sure at some point it's going to catch on with the other manufacturers but the only one who really uses this right now that I know of is the Louisville slugger it's the uh, true three technology they call it um, and of course it's it's a it's a much more expensive bat so uh, now talking about the design, now let's look at the materials of these bats. So, uh, you know, the old school bats are the alloy fast pitch bats. So these are the metal bats that, that we've been swinging since, since uh, you know, my generation were kids. Um, these are most often used in the one piece designs. Mm -hmm. um, metal makes for a stronger product. Uh, so these are much more durable in the cold weather. Um, and... Uh, you know, but the problem with these bats are they have a smaller sweet spot. So the sweet spot, uh, if you aren't sure what that means, is uh, there's, a, there's a part of the barrel of the bat where if you hit it, it has the best performance. Um, and these differ based on the, even the manufacturers. Their sweet spots are different. Um, but the metal bats, your, your sweet spot is much smaller than on the composite bats. So that's one of the downsides of it. Or, you know, the likely, especially younger kids, the likelihood of them making contact within that sweet spot, um, the chances are a lot less than if you had a bigger sweet spot on a, on a uh, composite type bat. Um, and because of that, these bats are typically lower performance value. Um, yeah, so a lot of people don't really use the alloy bats. Uh, it, the, the ones that do, um, if you're if you're at a game and you hear a loud pitching sound where it's like ping when the ball hits the bat, um, that's typically an alloy bat. So the composite type bats, um, these are used in the one piece or two piece designs. Uh, they're made from carbon fiber, graphite, fiberglass. Um, but these are um, used to kind of bind together and, and it does make for a less durable product. Um, now with these bats come with a larger sweet spot. So, um, you know, the uh, alloy bats, you have your smaller sweet spot. These, you have a, a bigger sweet spot. So you are more likely to make solid contact 
with the ball. Um, now these are also the mid performance value, mid mid to high. Um, you know, uh, you're looking at bats that that perform well for the girls, and but you're also you know going to pay a little bit extra for it. And then of course we have the hybrid bats. So this will be a two piece design only, maybe three piece design. Um, it's a combination of composite material and alloy material. So typically the handles are alloy and then the, the barrels are composite. And these are higher performance value. So you know, you're, you're getting a pretty good bat, but you're also paying a pretty good price for it. Now, another big question we have is sizes of bats. <coughs> so you both have the length and weight. Uh, we'll talk about the length first. Um, the length, typically are from 26 inches to 34 inches um, you know the the 26 27 inch batch you don't see many of and the same as 33 34 inch batch you don't see many of at least in the youth high school level um, 34 inches you'll see more in the college level um, now measuring a bat for the player the, the easiest and quickest way to measure for a bat is to um, do the old school approach so it's to put the knob in the center of the gir girl's chest and have her extend her arm out and she has to be able to reach to the bottom of the barrel or the tip of the bat um, that typically tells you that that's the right length for her um, there, there are charts uh, and Jeff uh, Plumer actually gave me this so there's a headbanger sports page this link here um, it, it gives you an idea of what bat to use based off of the player's weight and height. Uh, so this might be a little bit more um, exact on the type of bat. And of course, all of this depends on the comfort level of the kid. So um, the easiest way is to go to a place like Dick's or somebody and, and try to test the bats that they have and see which one makes her or helps her uh, you know, feel comfortable swinging. Now, we have to be careful with the younger kids. Uh, the, you, your younger players should be swinging shorter bats or bats that they can control through the hitting zone. Um, and the reason why this is important is because remember, um, the younger kids, we're teaching them to love the game. And part of that is being successful in the game. So if you give them a bat that's too big for them and they can't control through the hitting zone, um, they're not gonna be as successful. And if they're not as successful, it's going to take away from the fun, which is going to make it more challenging to um, build a, uh, a passion for the game. Um, and then that, that's when girls kind of quit or move on. Um, so you, you want to give them the tools that they need to be successful at an early age. So um, it helps them be more confident and enjoy the game more when they play. Um, now, the next thing we'll talk about is the weight of the bat. <coughs> So um, the, you'll see the, the reference of a drop weight. Um, what this means is, is you have the length of the bat and you minus that drop of whatever it might be. And then that is the weight of the bat. Okay, so say for example, you have a 30 inch bat with a drop 10. So you take 30 inches, you minus uh, the, the drop 10. So you subtract 10 and you get 20 ounce bat. So it's a 30, drop 10 equals 20 ounces. Um, these drop weights are from anywhere from minus eight all the way up to minus 13. Um, so the higher number is a lighter bat. Um, now we'll talk about balanced or end loaded. Um, there's typically two types of bats and this is just where the weight is within the bat. Um, a balanced bat is a bat that's used for mostly contact hitters. Um, you'll see slappers use these bats, um, but but uh, it's it's the feel for the bat when you swing through the hitting zone and make contact. End loaded is more for your power type hitters. Um, the the bat uh, the weight of the bat isn't the end of the barrel, so when you swing, you get you get more power generated through the swing. Um, now, it, you don't have to be a power hitter swing and loaded bat and you don't have to be a balanced or a, I'm sorry a uh, contact hitter to swing a balanced bat it all depends on the preference of the player so some like one over the other um, but it just you just typically fall that way based on the type of hitter you are <clears throat> now the one thing with weight that you want to think about is 
bowling ball hitting the pin so when you go bowling and if you grab one of those pink neon balls and throw that as hard as you can down the out uh, down the lane and hit the pins the ball bounces off the pins and you may not knock them all down um, but if you grab a heavier ball <coughs> and throw that ball down there you're going to more likely uh, knock down all the pins because that ball isn't bouncing off of those pins the, the weight is the same way you want to swing the heaviest weight of a bat that you can handle comfortably through the hitting zone um, you know you, you don't really want to swing a minus 13 or drop 12 or drop 11 uh, unless you really really have to obviously the younger kids do but as you get older you want to move to the drop 10 drop 9 um, to uh, help with with uh, the hitting through the through the hitting zone okay so the next thing is okay we're um, carrying tips uh, with the expense, and, and most kids already do this, but with the expense of bats, um, you know, you only want them to be for individual use. Um, I know at one time we would have team bats on our teams and <clears throat> um, you know, all that stuff, but uh, for the most case, everyone has their own bats now. Um, and so, th and then now here's the talk about the temperature. So, a lot of bat manufacturers recommend not to swing their bats below 60 degrees. Uh, in in the north area, you know, our, our seasons typically start in March and April, and there are going to be games when it is going to be below 60. So um, you can use these bats. Uh, it, it doesn't mean it's going to break. It just increases the likelihood of it breaking. Now, the one thing that, that some people will try to sell you, and this is my opinion on this, is bat warmers, to me, are a waste of money. Um, and you'll see a lot of people trying to sell that to you. Um, bat warmers really, bats aren't really the problem. It's the balls that cause the problem. So, um, you know, th when the balls get cold, you know, most of the balls are leather, uh, leather cover. When that leather gets cold, it gets real um, rigid, hard. And, you know, it's more about the ball damaging the bat than it is the bat damaging itself. So, um, you know, the materials in the bat don't get softer you know because it's cold but the balls get harder and that's actually what breaks the bats um, now <clears throat> the weather can in fact uh, uh, affect the bats now if you store a bat when it's really really cold like you keep a car a uh, bat in your car when it's below zero outside um, and then the other extreme if you're keeping your bat in a car when it's 120 degrees in the car um, those extreme temperatures can um, can affect the binding materials of the bat so it could weaken the bat over time um, now the other thing is uh, these these rubber cage balls uh, so you get the pitching machine and those th they're the the balls that look like giant golf balls um, those balls are really hard so <clears throat> you know those can damage your bats um, I'm not a big pitching machine fan uh, when, when we do training um, I I really don't like pitching machines. I think they just wreck bats, and they're really not beneficial to the girls at all. Uh, mostly because, you know, when you're uh, pitching to these girls with front toss, you're kind of uh, you're releasing the ball from your hip, or you, you should be anyway. And that visual is what the girls need to, you know, get prepared to see a pitcher go. Um, you know, it also helps with understanding and knowing the strike zone, uh, where you typically don't get that whenever you're throwing with a pitching machine. You know, the, the balls most ten, most most likely are consistent strikes, um, and it, it really doesn't give the girls any type of uh, benefit on understanding or learning the strike zone. <clears throat> um, now, I would use pitching machines when I coached. I used pitching machines to practice bunting. Uh, you know. Bunting is okay to, to practice on a pitching machine. Um, you're not really, you know, there's not really a high impact uh, with, the, with the bat to the ball, so you're not going to cause a lot of damage. Um, and, you know, it, it is something that you can practice easily with, with bunting. Um, front, I'm a big fan of front toss. I think front toss is, is key to developing a, a batter. Um, <clears throat> now, I know some people say that they can't do it or they can't throw it hard enough. But all you need to do is, is move the screen closer to the batter. Um, the closer you get, the faster that ball is, is seen by the, by the batter. 
Um, and another trick you can do is, is stack plates. So you can have um, two plates back to back and you can have the batter move between the two plates and you just keep pitching at the same distance and it, it, uh, mm -hmm. it mimics a different pitching speed uh, for the girl. So it helps them understand how to make their adjustments in the middle of an at-bat. Another thing that some kids don't know about, but make sure they're rotating the bat um, when they're hitting it. If you, you know, come up to the plate and, and you're and you're looking at the same spot on the bat and you're swinging, you're hitting that same area on the bat repeatedly over and over and over again, and that can cause damage. So just make sure the girls know to rotate that bat as often as they can, so you're spreading the the hits on the on the barrel. Um, and another thing, and, and I just learned this not too long ago, um, if you if you have a girl who is breaking bats repeatedly, um, it might be time for them to drop down. So if they're swinging a balanced bat, um, drop 10, uh, they may want to consider swinging a drop 9. And that extra weight can help them potentially uh, not break the bat um, and, and it's just something to try if you're if you're really going through bats a lot. You see a lot of kids saying, you know, or parents saying on Facebook that, you know, their daughter broke three bats in one season, or, or you know, they they're breaking these bats, you know, within a month of having them. Uh, a lot of that is based off of the uh, drop that they have. It's just not the bat's just too light for them. All right now, this slide is just a, a manufacturer slide. Um, I just picked six different manufacturers uh, these are the most common ones um, they uh, I listed the different bats that have positive reviews uh, and you can see the price range is anywhere from $100 all the way up to $450 um, and these bats are common so you'll see that they're two-piece bats there's composite bats there's bats that are drop 12 drop 13 um, you know, the, the hybrid type bats are out there. Uh, I just have them all listed here. All these bats I said are, are you know, have positive reviews. Um, the higher drops are for your younger girls. Uh, you know, you wanna get them to swing a lighter bat if possible. Um, but yeah, the, this is a nice reference sheet for, for bats that you would like to try or you would like to see. Um, now the final slide is this, is the important reminders that I wanna remind everybody uh, about. So the first thing is try to avoid buying bats at stores such as Walmart. Um, they do have some okay bats, but for the most part, that's where you're getting your one-piece alloy bats. Um, and you know, a lot of times you 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 really don't want those types of bats. You know, they might be T-ball bats, or you know, it's it's just best to avoid them. Um, and here's another thing that I see some parents do: don't buy a bat that your daughter needs to grow into. All right. Um, and the reason why is, again, I talked a little bit about it before, is that you want your daughter to be successful, especially at a young age. Um, so you want her to swing a bat that fits her. And if you do that, that'll, you know, increase the likelihood of her being successful, which helps her, you know, grow a passion for the game. Um, if she's swinging a bat that doesn't fit her uh, or too big for her, um, she's going to struggle and it's not going to be any fun for her. Um, another thing to keep in mind is to keep receipts of these bats. So if you buy a bat, especially if you buy an expensive one, keep that receipt. Um, a lot of these bat manufacturers are very forgiving, uh, and if your bat does break, you can send it back to them with the receipt, and they'll give you another bat. Um, the no a new thing here, or this isn't new, but um, you, you do not want to use doctored bats. So I, I see this pop up on Facebook every once in a while. Um, but you'll see a, a, a business that offers bat rolling, bat heating, um, bat shaving, uh, yeah, those types of things. You're really doctoring that bat. And, um, you know, bat rolling and bat heating, you're, you're really not, uh, you know, it, it is technically legal because you're not really changing anything in that bat. But what you're doing is killing the life of it. So these bats are made and designed um, to, um, you know, slowly get better and better and better performance wise and then you'll get to a crest to to a limit and that limit is uh um, is what satisfies the usa softball um 
uh, requirements uh, with bat technology. And once you hit that limit, then it's going to start going down, and that's when your bat breaks. So when your bat gets like really, really hot and it's performing the best that you've ever seen, enjoy it because that means it's almost done. And when you do these uh, bat rolling and bat heating, <clears throat> all you're doing is uh, getting to that point quicker, so you're going to have a bat with a shorter life um, with use. Um, now, bat shaving is when they take the cap off and they make the bat real slim inside again that's that's something I think that's more for slow pitch that does that but um, that's also something you need to stay away from because it is illegal um, and another thing that some people do is they'll speed up the break-in process of these bats so you'll see people using rubber mallets to to break in the, the composite and stuff and again just just go and throw front toss to your daughter and let her get every swing she can out of that bat um, it'll help her develop as a player um, you know and, and she gets used to that bat and she can get full use out of that bat these tricks to speed up the process really isn't doing much other than cutting your life short on the bat and so both the NFS and BCFPL require the USA uh, softball certification um, these are the stamps listed here um, your bats need to have one of these three on there um, for it to be legal uh, in, in those classifications. Um, so um, that's the end of, of this episode. Um, again, I, I wanted to make this geared towards the, the newer parents. Um, a lot of this stuff, many of you probably already know. Um, maybe some of my opinions you don't agree with, but um, we don't need to worry about that. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, I, I try to keep this where it's kind of a high level uh, understanding for the new parents and just give them some understanding of bats um, and again uh, Jeff uh, Plumer uh, is our sponsor um, he is now our uh, approved um, bat rep for the Beaver County Softball Network um, and you know it, it would be really appreciated that if you ever do need to purchase bats to reach out to myself or to Jeff uh, and we will help you get the bat that you need um, so, again, thanks for tuning in. Um, my name is Bill Whitler, and we will catch you next time.